So, if we start with the strategic alignment of projects, and uh, basically what I'm talking about is uh, uh, the work we did at Eurocontrol. I had, Eurocontrol had gone through a process of transformation, which was basically the idea that they wanted to become more project-oriented. And um, Eurocontrol was a semi-public organization funded by uh, different countries, a little bit like CERN, in fact, funded by their different partners. Uh, it started with uh, 12 countries, and today it's about 33 countries uh, across Europe and the Mediterranean. And the whole idea was to be able to create a unified airspace for Europe. Uh, if you take Russia, if you take China, if you take Canada, if you take the US, they have a fairly unified national airspace. Europe is 29 countries in half the size of um, the US with double the population. So you can imagine, and also we were at the end of the uh, Second World War, there was a lot of military airspace, and they needed to have a program to uh, unify that. So they created this approach of, we're going to start doing project management. And they, they did that in the mid-90s. And then they went on a bit later in the early 2000s. They said, well, now that we're getting better at project management, uh, maybe you should think about programs. So what they basically did, they identified six major areas. It's interesting that Alexandre presented us with six programs uh, for uh, Richemont. And uh, they had six areas in which they were going to create programs. One of them was the airport capacity improvement. And that's the program I worked for. So they decided, OK, we need a program for airport capacity improvement, because what was happening after 20 years, now they had managed to get a fairly unified airspace over Europe, but now they had all these planes in the air, they had kind of doubled the number of planes that were in the air, also air traffic was getting more and more popular, but they had nowhere to land. And as most of you know, if you travel through Europe, if you have a 45-minute flight, it will take you at least an hour and a half, if not two hours, to get there. Because the airports are congested. And they always say, by the way, what is the typical excuse of the pilot? Air traffic control, right? So basically, this airport capacity improvement program uh, was defined. And then they said, OK, let's take all the projects that have something to do with airport capacity improvement and bring them into that program. So they brought in six projects into that program. And, um, and then they, they, the, the program manager, I had worked with them because I had participated in the, the training program for project management and all that, and developing the training and developing the uh, uh, for the whole organization, worked with the HR department at that time. He called me and he said, Michel, uh, you talked about program management during your course, and I'd be interested for you to see if we, we, how we can better manage your program. And the first meeting we had, I said, OK, well, these are the six projects. This is your program. What are your program objectives? He said, well, to improve capacity. I said, yes, but how do they relate to the organization's strategy? And then he said, well, I'm not sure. What do you mean, the organization strategy? Well, you have a vision, you have strategic objectives in the organization, uh, you have things like that. Somebody, somebody takes care of that, right? I said, yes, it's the people in strategy. They're up in, in the top corner of the building there, but their doors always close. We don't usually go there. Okay? So I went up with him and I knocked on the door and they said, yes, come in. And I said, OK, I'm, I'm helping. Um, this man do his uh, program, and um, I would like to know what the, uh, the strategy or the org do you have a document that explains the strategy of the organization? I said, oh yeah, we have a strategic document and all that, and they gave me a document which had what they called operational improvements, and they had a list of 29 operational improvements that needed to be achieved over the next five years. I said, OK, these are your kind of strategic objectives. They said, yes. So I thought it was a bit much, but anyway. So went back down with him uh, to the, the program office, and then we uh, started looking at these 29 uh, improvements. And I said, OK, how do you think your capacity improvement, uh, airport capacity improvement program is going to contribute to 
any of those objectives. You have to choose, I suggested, between five and seven. And he, we looked at it, and we discussed it, and we came up with seven operational improvements that we could contribute to as part of this program. So the next step we did was we went to see the project managers. We got the six project managers into a room and said, OK, now you're all here. These are the seven strategic objectives that the program needs to contribute to. Can you explain how your specific project is going to contribute to this strategic objective? And they looked at me a bit puzzled. They said, well, we're, we're, we're producing, in one case it was a study on uh, um, radar systems. In another case, it was a study on uh, communication data management. In another case, it was uh, analyzing vortex between planes so that they could reduce the time between planes. For example, if a huge 747 uh, leaves and you, is followed by a small Cessna, uh, obviously the small Cessna needs, needs about one minute behind uh, because if it's too close, it's going to be caught in the vortex of the big plane. On the opposite, if the Cessna leaves before the other plane, they can leave like 15 seconds after because there's no, no problem with the vortex. So they wanted to try to improve that, to improve the capacity of airports. And so basically, we looked at all these projects and we said, OK, now, but beyond the actual technical product or the, the result, the service that you're going to provide, what, how are you going to contribute, how does that contribute to the strategic objectives of the program? And we force each project manager to think, and this is a little bit like this line, uh, that each project manager had to think about how their project was going to contribute to this program. Now, one of the other things that came out of that was the fact that all the project managers were focusing on their project. I need to be on time, I need to be on budget, I need to deliver my scope, I need to deliver what I want in my project. Now, I don't care really about the other project. They can do what they want, but I'm going to deliver on time and on budget. And I'm going to deliver the right thing. Now, we started saying, OK, but you're all kind of connected in a way, because we're all together trying to create this improvement of capacity for airports. And therefore, we need not to think only in terms of projects, but also in terms of programs. Now, are we all contributing to the program? And about a year later, um, we, I worked with, with that program for a period of three years, and, and a year later, we, we created a team-building exercise where we put all the project managers into a room and had, they built, had them build uh, connects. Basically, Connects is a, a building game. And there was a theme to it. The theme was that we were all building a theme park. There was one team was building a big Ferris wheel, another team was building a roller coaster, etc. And the number of pieces depended on the size of the team. Now, what happened is that the first teams, they, they all had a different way of managing, and the first teams finished, and they said, we're finished. And I said, what was our objective for the day? And I said, well, to build our Ferris wheel or to build our roller coaster. No, no, I said, no. What we said at the beginning of the day was that we need to have our park completed, open, ready for the public at 5 p.m. Now, it's 4 p.m., you're finished, but what about the park? Is it ready if we bring public here? Are we ready? And they realized, no, we're not. So I said, what can you do now? You're finished. Are you going to stay there and just say, OK, we're finished, we're waiting for others to finish? And they started looking around. They said, oh, well, I can help with this. I can help with that. And they started realizing that if they thought in terms of program, they were not just managing their project anymore, they were also interest in the success of the whole program. Now, what, what happened in, in, in the real life is that we had clarified these strategic objectives that the program needed to address. 
based on the strategy of the organization. So each project manager knew tangibly how their deliverables were going to contribute to each strategic objective. Okay. It also meant that uh, when we looked at it, and a little bit like Thies mentioned earlier, we realized that there were a few areas that we were not covering. None of the projects that were there were covering these areas. So we created a new project to address the areas that had not been covered by the projects we had already existing. The other thing we realized, there was one project, it was an environmental project, and it had been put in the program because it said, make sure that uh, when we improve the capacity of airports, it doesn't affect the environment, or it doesn't create a negative impact on the environment. But it had nothing to do with airport capacity improvement. It did not support any of the objectives, because the objectives were all about how can we increase the capacity of the airports, not about how can we protect the environment. There was another program that was about the environment. So we took this project and changed, gave it to the program that was about the environment, because it was not part of our strategic objectives. So the lesson from that is, is twofold. First, when you have a program that is just a grouping of existing projects, it's never too late to go back to, OK, why are we doing this program? Why, why does this program exist? What are we trying to achieve? What are the benefits we're trying to deliver to the business? Go back to your stakeholders, your key stakeholders. Ask them what the objectives are. Whether it's an existing strategy or whether it's strategic objectives that you need to have defined, then you, you would have a meeting with your key stakeholder and say, OK, with your sponsor, for example, say, what are those strategic objectives? Clarify that. And then go back and say, OK, how do these projects tangibly contribute to these strategic objectives? What are the tangible results that we can directly link to a contribution to these strategic objectives? The other thing also the program manager learned is that you can't manage all the deliverables of all the projects in your program. You have to focus on those deliverables that directly contribute to a strategic objective. So focus on those strategic objectives, those macro level objectives, that can actually deliver benefits to the business. And manage only, control only from the project point of view, the elements that you can clearly have, that clearly have a link with those objectives. Because otherwise you're going to be micromanaging, you're going to be doing the job of the project managers. So it means that you create, you try to simplify the process. It's not complicated. There's, by the way, there's a big difference between complicated and complex. Systems are usually complicated. People are complex. The best example, if you, if you build an airplane motor, uh, it's complicated. It's not complex, because the pieces always assemble in the same way. But take a plate of spaghetti, or Louis Aglio, you know, take a fork, turn it in the plate, bring it up. What's going to be the size of the bite you have on the fork? You can never predict it. So it's simple. There's just spaghetti and oil, and a bit of garlic, if you like it, and parsley. But it's the interaction between the different elements that creates the complexity. So more, even more, if you're in a complex environment, you have to create simple rules. You have to simplify the systems. And program management will help you do that by clarifying what are the high-level objectives and how we should align. In a program, you may realign the program in terms of the means, how you're going to get there. But the why you're going there will stay the same. The why is really central. Why are we doing this? The how is outside of that, so how we're going to do it. And the what, which is the product, is the more on the outside, the more precise, the more technical. But the what is important, but it's the why that you have to worry about. Why we're doing that.